hello from the floor of my former New York City bedroom since legally renamed the guest room. Don't worry, I haven't left Japan. I'm just visiting my family in New York for the next 10 days. So yes, the caption is true. I hiked the second most difficult trail on Mount Fuji. It was called the Subashiri Trail. We started at the fifth station, which is the most common place to start, and it's about 2,000 meters above sea level. So to get to Mount Fuji, we took a bus from Gotemba Station in Shizuoka. We arrived in Gotemba the night before from Tokyo. It costs 2,100 yen for a round trip bus ticket, and the bus comes every Every hour starting at about 7 30 a.m. until 5 30 p.m. We caught the 8 25 bus and the bus ride was about an hour and 20 minutes. So we got there around 8 45 a.m. and I slept the entire bus ride <laughs> there. So that was nice. When we arrived at the fifth station of the Subashiri Trail, I keep calling it the Spadashi Trail, which just means amazing in Japanese, the Subashiri Trail. We chose this trail because less people hike on it, so it's not super crowded. The easiest hike is the most popular and it's more like a line for a theme park. So we didn't want to do that. I just bought some postcards because there's a post office at the top of the mountain. Anyway, I'm really tired. I did not sleep enough last night. We're gonna go slow. The fifth station was also just really cool. They had cafes and souvenir shops. The cafe food looked delicious. I kind of wish I didn't eat breakfast so that I could have enjoyed the food there. But I did get black tea to drink while I was waiting. So yeah, it is really important to wait at the fifth station for about an hour to get acclimated to the thinning of the air so that you don't get altitude sickness. Which is really a nice excuse to relax before the big hike. I got some tea that came in a British teacup and it's black tea, they don't have green tea. This is bringing me back to life. I was so tired when I first got here. I was sleeping on the whole bus ride. Yeah, I planned on like showing you the scenery on the bus ride on the way up, but yeah, I was just, I was sleeping all the time. But yeah, the souvenir shops are really cool. They also have everything you need, like if you forget gloves or a hat or anything, you can get it here. You can even buy an American flag, take a photo. After about an hour of blazing around on the wooden benches by the souvenir shops, we started our journey. At the entrance of the trail, there were some volunteers asking for donations for maintaining the Fuji Trail, and we donated about a thousand yen each. And when you donate, you get these really cool pins that have nice art of Mount Fuji on them. So yeah, after a few minutes of hiking the entrance of the trail, we reached a shrine where you can pray for protection during your journey up the mountain. So that's what we did. These lava rocks. about 40 minutes into the hike. It no longer feels like a forest. It's starting to feel like an actual volcano now. Check out all that mountain mist. All these cute little bell flowers throughout the trail. Probably have a good view from here if it wasn't so much cloud. Look at these tiny mountain strawberries. I will not be eating them, but how cute are they? I just want to show what I'm wearing because I feel like I'm perfectly comfortable and I chose wisely when choosing. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I dressed well for the occasion. I have on hiking boots that are already broken in. Um, they fit me really well. I know they're good and comfortable. High socks, leggings, shorts, t-shirt. My boots are really lightweight, which is apparently very important on the way down. We also have gaiters to cover this all up. Apparently gravel will easily get in the boots, but I'll show you guys those later. Good sturdy backpack with a water hose. And it's about 14 degrees right now. We have a lot of coverage from the clouds, so we're not too hot. 
I mean, we're hot because we're like walking. So far, so good with this hike. I think it was a good choice. Lots of trees, not many people. We made it to the first rest stop area. Food. So we're gonna get some hot udon. Udon came. Yeah, this is kind of a luxury hike, isn't it? There's <laughs> <laughs> rest stops and hot food on the mountain. Mm. Much more luxurious than the hike I did last weekend. Another very important thing is bring a lot of Hyakuen coins because the restrooms are about 200 yen each. So you will need coins. Very important, very important tip. So after enjoying our noodles and having a bathroom break, we continued on our journey. The second part still had plenty of tree coverage, and just about 40 minutes later, we reached our next um, hut, which was the original six station. I don't know why they call it the original six station and then just the regular six station. I don't know why it's not just the seventh station, but but yeah. Hey man, let's go to the next station. And here you can get. Oh. Okay, four kilometers to the summit. We're not going to the summit. We're staying overnight at a station. Oh, ducks. Yeah. Lots of ducks. Floating in the sea of clouds. <laughs> yes, normally you can like sit here, look at the ducks, and enjoy the view. But there are just some clouds, just a few clouds today. The next station, which is the original six station. These cute ducks on the table. I think this is supposed to be overlooking a really nice view, but it's really cloudy. Really cloudy right now. We're in complete fog. But yeah, it's starting to get a little cold now, so I got a jacket. I think we overpacked on our snacks and food. I didn't realize how easy it would be to buy snacks and food at the stations. They are a little pricey and the higher you go, the more expensive they get. But um, yeah, they have everything you need. It's really not that bad, the Subashidi Trail. I feel like if you've hiked before, you can do this. It's very uphill, and but you can just go slow, but there's nothing difficult. Like there's nothing that you have to like hold onto ropes and hike with. You don't have to cross anything dangerous. You just, you're going up a very steep hill. Just make sure you have comfortable shoes that are already broken in that are lightweight. Uh, make sure you have a good backpack that's lightweight. The person who I'm hiking with does not have a good backpack. <laughs> he is regretting not getting a good backpack. Yeah, I think it, uh, anyone, anyone who has hiked before or hikes occasionally can do the Subashidi Trail. Definitely worth it. It's starting to drizzle a bit now. That is something we are not prepared for. We got some view. Hello down there. We put a rock at the top of this pile. Just a little more to go. Oh, look at it. It looks so volcano-y. Yeah, no yeah, no more trees. Shrubs. Shrubs and clouds and volcanic rock. A little shine. Yeah. I look like a cowgirl now with my pigtails. But hey guys, we made it to the seventh station. But it is um, unfortunately closed today. Which means the toilets here are closed as well. I don't know why it's closed, but it is closed. Strange dog. <laughs> what kind of dog do they have? Anyway, this is what it looks like from up here. Much cloud, very gray. And after that, we made it to the seventh station, which is when it started to rain. We were not very prepared for the rain. <laughs> my friend had a poncho, but I didn't really have anything. My jacket was waterproof, luckily. I think my big Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park Explorer explored. hat really protected me from the rain a bit. But oh my God, you guys. So what the rain brought, we were not expecting at all. After that, the clouds cleared a bit and we were able to get our first real view from the mountain before making our way to the eighth station, which is where we stayed for the night. And the views from the eighth station were just perfect, like amazing. By the way, for the hut, it is important to make a reservation. If you don't 
go with the group, you may have to make your reservation in Japanese. The hut provides dinner and breakfast the next morning. Those also have to be reserved in advance. But once you get there, you just give your name and then they show you where you're sleeping for the night. And here is what our hut looked like. So we made it to our hut and this is going to be the sleeping situation for tonight. Sleeping bags, there's this thing under it. So it's actually kind of comfortable, I hope. Yeah. We had dinner which was vegetarian, so that was great. I don't know how delicious the dinner was, but, but it sustained us. Looks like we got salad, macaroni salad or something, and some green tea. We got a vegetarian meal. I made a mistake. I ate before filming. Sorry, but it was curry and rice. And you saw those two already, so yes. Okay, where's my pillow? So anyway, <laughs> where was I? Ah uh, yes, the food. The food, it wasn't great. <laughs> it did the job. We got a hot meal. After dinner, we just walked around the camp for a bit, taking in as much of the breathtaking views as we could. I don't think the camera does it justice. I wish you guys could see what this really looked like. It was, it was amazing. chose to watch the sunset from our hut from the 8th station which this is a tip that I have I don't think it's necessary to wake up at 2 a.m. to climb to the top to catch the sunrise if you stay at the 8th or 9th station overnight just catch the sunrise from there because it is just as amazing and beautiful you see the whole sea of clouds I couldn't imagine this view getting any better from the top After being speechlessly in awe for about an hour, probably a view that will not be topped in my lifetime, we headed to the top. It was about 6 a.m. at this point. It's the next day, we're almost at the summit. We're at the last station before the summit. I think it's the last station. Okay, this is what the station looks like. The whole way up there was no visibility. It was extremely cloudy, which makes me a little happy that we watched the sunrise from our, the eighth station because I don't know if we went to the top and then weren't able to see anything. I would have been so disappointed. I don't know if that's the case though. It might have just like got cloudy at 6 a.m. after the sunrise. Like I think probably the eight and a half station, the one after us, is probably the best station to stay overnight at because they're just closer to the top so you'll have to hike less the next day in the morning when you're super tired. Yeah, if there's one thing that I could change from my Fuji hiking journey, it would have been that. I just would have stayed at a station higher. See the people coming down the mountain. Oh, it's a pretty nice view. I'm very tired. It was hard to sleep in that cabin last night. There was a lot of school kids there that were just having fun all night. It was great for them, but not great for us. Anyway, we're about an hour from the summit. We're gonna get going. Towards the top of the mountain, the Subashiri Trail merges with the Yoshida Trail, so keep that in mind because you will have a bit of a traffic jam at the top. We didn't have so much of a traffic jam, I think, because of the time that we hiked. Yeah, after climbing up some rocks, we made it to the top. First thing we did when we got there was going to the shrine to escape the cold. It was so cold up the top, you guys, and like it was also a windstorm. It was super windy. We were getting like whipped left and right with these ice cold wind things. So yeah, the first thing we did when we got up there was go into the shrine to escape the cold and to pray for good luck for the year. We also bought a few omamori, which are charms um, for ourselves and for our friends. So we officially made it to the top. Here is <laughs> the top of Fuji. This is 
sun on it. Okay, we really wanted to spend some time at the top and walk around, go to the post office and mail the postcards that we had written at the bottom of the mountain. We wanted to see the crater of the volcano. Unfortunately, there was no visibility, so we couldn't see the crater. We couldn't see any views from the mountain. And also the weather was so bad, we really couldn't make that half hour walk to the post office and then back. Luckily, there was a restaurant at the top of the mountain. So this was our saving grace. We stopped inside to warm up and have some hot miso soup, which was actually really delicious. Did not expect it to be delicious. I just thought it was gonna warm us up. Did a bunch of other things on the menu too, like curry rice, odin, cup noodle. So it was all way more expensive than it would normally be, but it was worth it. So worth it. <laughs> they also had vending machines at the top of the mountain, which was so cool. Like, how did you get them up there? <laughs> so yeah, after the restaurant, we headed down the mountain and once we did, the clouds finally started to clear and we got amazing views again. We also came across the truck that delivers things to the mountain huts and to the top of the mountain and that's how I suspect they got the vending machines up there. Hike down was really fun. It was one of the most unique hiking experiences that I've ever had. You basically run and slide your way down on the gravelly sand stuff. It was really fun. We were walking down the mountain at the same pace of a group of pilgrims. So people who made a sacred pilgrimage up and down Mount Fuji. Sometimes we were ahead, sometimes they were ahead. They were kind of like our trail buddies. So yeah, then when we got even lower down the mountain, closer to the bottom, the sand run got real. We could basically ski down the mountain in the grapple dirt stuff. And this is why the gators are so important. This would literally be impossible without them and it would have taken us much longer to get back down the mountain. We saw some people who were not prepared and just wearing like regular sneakers and they were not having a good time. So yeah, don't be those guys. Have fun and run down the mountain. And after that, there was one more station which I didn't film for some reason. So yeah, after that last station that I didn't film, there was a bit more forest and then we made it. We're officially at the bottom of Mount Fuji, back where we started. I'm gonna go take the lunch shower back. So yeah, that was our hike on the Tsubashiri Trail on Mount Fuji. It did leave us with very painful legs for the next three days, but, um, but yeah, overall it was a great experience. Super fun. Would I do it again? Maybe. I do want to try to do from sea to summit. So it's good luck if you take some seawater to the top of Mount Fuji and pour it out there. I'd like to try that one day instead of hiking from the fifth station. It doesn't seem too hard, especially considering it is it is gliking, not, not regular hiking. But yeah, if you do hike Mount Fuji, I highly recommend the Subashiri Trail. Even if you're not an avid hiker, it really wasn't particularly difficult. It's just maybe slightly longer. Anyway, thanks for watching you guys. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my New York trip. There will be a video coming out about that too, by the way. You can meet my Italian New Yorker family. Uh, that's all for today. Do the liking and subscribing for more Japan things and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.